Hello and welcome in my next tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can create this temperature treated metal in Cinema 4D Octane. So let's get started. Let's go to create extensions for the Octane, Octane material, and let's apply it to our object. Now let's double click at the material, go to node editor, and in node editor, you want to click at the material, go to basic, change the material type to metallic, and BRDF model to GGX energy preserving. Now let's go to specular map and let's go all the way up to one so we can get really nice metal material. Now let's go to the roughness and let's go with 0.15 to get a bit more rough look. Now let's go to film layer. We can leave the film EOR as it is. And for the actual color shift and film layer, we need something like a gradient. In some cases you can use octane gradient, but it depends on the UVs. Let's see if we can do it here with this object. So let's just add the octane gradient. Let's go with the linear and let's see what we have here. We need to probably rotate it. And this object I have here has actually good UVs to create this with just a gradient. But I will show you in a second how you can do it otherwise. So we need to adjust a few things here, like decreasing the white value in this gradient. So it's not this extreme. And from the look of it, I probably need to invert those two sliders. And you might even have to change the position of the black slider to position around here. And let's adjust the gray slider here as well. I think something around 32 is just fine. And we already have really nice temperature treated metal here. But we can do a few more things here. So let's add composite texture in front of the gradient. And let's add like three layers maybe. And let's connect the gradient to the first one. For now, we can disable the layer three by unplugging it from the composite texture. And in the layer two, we can add, for example, noise. Uh, so octane noise. Let's change in the layer two blend mode to soft light. And let's change the opacity to lower value. As we can see, our UVs are quite stretched here. So instead, we will use three planar projection. So let's add projection here go with the tree planer and to actually make it work we need tree planer in front of the noise and if we solo node it we now can see everything is fine we just need to connect the transform to scale it up to maybe 10 and let's increase the blend angle so it's a bit less visible like so around 20 seems to be fine and let's disable the cell node now and we can see we have now a bit less even look of this temperature treated metal we can also lower the opacity here to maybe 0.1 so it's not this uh, powerful and and in the layer 3 we'll add hage slag which gives us this look of scratches we just need to adjust it so we need to add three planer again so projection three planer and three planer in front of the hage slag so it works and let's so note it of course and let's add transform here as well if we need it so first of all we definitely need to decrease the density to maybe two and let's uh change the sprinkle length to like maybe 10 and maybe let's change the radius to 0.02 in this case you might need to adjust it to your object of course and let's disable the cell node and let's go to the layer 3 and change the blend mode to soft light and again we need to change the opacity here to maybe 0.1 and we already have those nice scratches here but we can still make them a bit better so maybe we can change the length to like 50 let's actually solo node it and let's change the radius to 0.01 let's see how it looks and maybe the density to one let's see if we can Get better result by scaling it up yeah it looks a bit better we just need to recompensate the scale with higher density to maybe four and let's lower the sprinkle radius again to 0.005 and this looks great we need to change the opacity here to maybe 0.05 and we have now really subtle scratches here of course instead of this whole hage slag node you can use textures which will speed up your workflow i just want to show you how you can do it without the textures same with the noise you can use the texture to actually get nice results let me actually change the opacity of this texture to 0.05 as well so it's not this extreme and we already have really nice temperature treated metal here now let me show you the way you can achieve similar look without uh, gradient if you don't have correct uvs or 
uh, you have just issues with the gradient. So let's go here to the viewport. And what we need to do here is, as you can see, here's the cloner. Let me actually disable the cloning. And we just have one exhaust here. And I have here vertex map and box field. And let me actually delete it so I can show you how to make it. So let's click at your object. Of course, make sure it's dense enough so it can have gradient on it. And let's go to select, set vertex weight and click OK. And let's click at the vertex map tag here. Let's check the use fields, delete the freeze, and let's add either a linear field or the box field. I kind of prefer the box field. And the box field is now here and it's quite small. We can adjust it right here, like so. And we can click at this box field here in our objects and change a few things. Let's go to remapping and let's turn down the inner offset to 0%. And this way we'll have a better fall off. And let's position it just at the beginning of this exhaust and maybe rotate it like so. We can still also change the scale now. Since we have 0% in the inner offset, we can just scale it up and the follow will be still nice through all this process. So let's say we need something like this. And let me go back here to the live viewer and let's right click here and type in vertex. And we need to find in the C4D shaders vertex map. Actually, we need to add here a layer, which I accidentally delete. So let's create one and remove layer like so. And let's connect it to the vertex map. Just make sure this new layer I just created is the layer one here in the composite texture. So it's at the bottom of all of these previous layers. And we now need to connect the vertex map we have here to vertex map in the node. So just simply click on it and drag the vertex map tag from here to the node editor to this box where it says vertex map. And now it's connected, as we can see. We just need to do the same thing as with the gradient. So we need to add octane gradient here and lower the wide slider value to maybe 30%. I think it was 33 and we have really nice fall off again, but this time around we can actually control it here, which is really cool. So we can even animate it if you want. And of course we can scale it up to get different results, which is really cool. And let me enable the cloners and we can see all of them together now looking really nice. And of course, we can use different nodes than just the vertex map and the gradient to create this uh, effect. We can, for example, use dirt node, which will result in really nice look as well. But in this case, it will be not as pronounced since we have not many edges here. So I just inverted the gradient and set the strength and radius to quite high values. Let me disable the cell node here. And as we can see, we get some of these here. Uh, we probably need a bit more, so I can just recompensate it here with a bit of more strength and this gradient here. Also, I will change the include object mode to just cell, so it doesn't take inclusion from the different objects next to it. And let's go back here to the gradient. Let's see if we can get a bit more visible results just using this object. So yeah, we make it a bit more visible right now. So it's only taking those uh, edges we have at the end. But of course, this uh, node will be way more useful in cases where you have more edges. And of course, you can as well use curvature, which is pretty much the same thing as the dirt. It just works slightly different, but you can get the same results. And yeah, I think that's it for this tutorial. I hope you find it entertaining and you learned something new today. If you like this type of content, be sure to subscribe. My goal on this channel is to upload one tutorial every week. And you can also find me on Instagram where I'm posting ahead what my next tutorial will be about. And I think that's it. See ya.